On August 6, 2025, the James Webb Space Telescope slammed into emergency mode to capture an object that, honestly, just shouldn't exist. Astronomers, including the PanStars team in Hawaii, expected a dying ball of ice. Instead, Webb's new data on the interstellar comet 3I Atlas just confirmed a chemical nightmare. This visitor isn't just unusual, it's breaking every rule in the book, and the deeper the data goes, the more unthinkable the questions get. So, let's explore this together. Emergency Override – Webb's Unprecedented Response What does it take to derail the most powerful space telescope ever built? Well, on August 6, 2025, we found out. The James Webb Space Telescope slammed into emergency mode, pausing its entire science program for the first time in years. This wasn't a scheduled observation, it was a high-stakes director's discretionary time override, a procedure so rare it's only the fourth such event since launch in 2021. The target, an interstellar object designated 3I Atlas. Ground-based telescopes had just flagged it for accelerating in ways no one could explain, its spectrum flashing with unexpected metals. The call was authorized directly by the Space Telescope Science Institute director Dr. Kenneth Sembach. The chain of command was short and swift, bypassing the usual committees that schedule Webb's time months in advance. The risk was immense. Webb's schedule is a precise ballet of fuel and orbits. A single unplanned maneuver to observe a target for 5.3 hours could cost a week of other science. But the window to catch 3I Atlas was closing fast, its trajectory was shifting by the hour. The command was uploaded, and the telescope pivoted, its near-infrared spectrograph NIR spec, locking onto a target that was rewriting astrophysics in real time. This wasn't a routine target of opportunity, it was a scramble to observe an object challenging our fundamental understanding of visitors from other star systems. Early Activity Beyond Jupiter's Orbit Here's the first red flag that 3I Atlas was no ordinary comet. It woke up in the deep freeze. Most comets are quiet until they cross inside the solar system's frost line near Jupiter's orbit, roughly five astronomical units from the Sun. But 3I Atlas was already active at 6.8 AU, far out where the Sun is just too weak to sublimate water ice. Ground-based telescopes, following up on alerts from observers like Karen Meech at the University of Hawaii, noted a persistent brightening of 0.3 magnitudes in just 48 hours. For an object this distant, that represents a massive increase in its gas and dust output. This sustained activity, producing a tenuous coma when the surface temperature was below 150 degrees Celsius, pointed to a body born in a place fundamentally different from our own solar system. Its engine had to be a hypervolatile ice, something that turns to gas in the slightest warmth of the distant sun. The comet's tail grew at a pace that stunned the teams watching, driven by gases that simply shouldn't have been active so far out. It was the first clue that the chemistry of this visitor, as cometary expert Michael Mama might put it, was deeply profoundly wrong. The Carbon Dioxide Anomaly The moment Webb's NARSPEC instrument locked on, the chemical picture came into focus, and it was a shock. The spectrum was overwhelmed by carbon dioxide. In the cold depths of space, CO2 ice turns to gas at much lower temperatures than water ice, explaining the early activity. But the sheer quantity was staggering, with a production rate exceeding 10 to the 28th molecules per second. Webb's data revealed a carbon dioxide to water ratio of 8 to 1. Let me put that in perspective. A typical comet from our solar system like Hale-Bopp has a CO2 to water ratio of about 20%, or 0.2 to 1. The interstellar comet 2 I Borisov had a ratio of about 0.4 to 1. 3 I Atlas was 20 times more CO2 rich than Borisov. As Dr. Neil Della Russo of Johns Hopkins APL, an expert in cometary composition would note, this is completely unprecedented. The data was undeniable with the telltale signature of CO2 at a wavelength of 4.26 microns burning bright and broad. Water was there but only as a faint afterthought. This wasn't just a comet with extra CO2, it was a body fundamentally built differently, pointing to a birthplace where water might be a trace element, a type of protoplanetary disk our models barely account for. Nickel without iron, an impossible chemistry. This is where the story goes from strange to, well, deeply unsettling. As the team at the European Southern Observatory analyzed the high-resolution spectra, they found clear emission lines for atomic nickel at 3,415, 3,524, 
and 3,525 angstroms. But the real shock was what was missing, iron. In every celestial body ever studied, nickel and iron are chemically inseparable, forged together in the hearts of dying stars and scattered in a cosmic ratio of about one part nickel to 15 parts iron. Yet even with the very large telescope's UVES instrument running at a resolving power of 80,000, iron was a ghost. The data was brutal. The upper limit on iron atoms meant nickel outnumbered it by more than 40 to 1. Spectroscopists like Neil Dello Russo at Johns Hopkins would confirm this is unprecedented. The only plausible, though exotic, path is the molecule nickel carbonyl, which is so volatile it vaporizes at just 43 degrees Celsius. This molecule is extremely fragile and would break down under solar radiation, releasing the free nickel. But for that to be the explanation, the object had to form in a place that chemically isolates nickel on an industrial scale, a process unknown in nature. Trajectory Anomalies and Acceleration Spikes As the chemical data was being analyzed, the teams tracking the comet's path were facing their own bewildering problems. 3i Atlas was not following the clean, predictable arc of gravity. It was accelerating, showing a non-gravitational change in velocity of nearly 0.12 meters per second squared over just 72 hours. While comets do this, the force is usually gentle. The acceleration of 3i Atlas, however, wasn't smooth. The trajectory tracked by the Minor Planet Center showed tiny, sharp jumps. This recalled the mystery of Oumuamua, whose own non-gravitational acceleration was famously detailed in a 2018 paper by Marco Michele. But this was different. For an object estimated to be 11 kilometers across, this is like watching a mountain suddenly shift course. The PanStars survey team ran every diagnostic checking for software bugs or errors in their astrometry. The data was solid. The acceleration was real. It meant the forces acting on 3i Atlas were not just coming from the sun. Something else was at play, something internal or something about its structure that allowed it to move in a way that defied our models, deepening the mystery and fueling speculation that this was no ordinary cosmic iceberg. The Lighthouse Effect, Mechanical Light Curves Every object in space tumbles, but 3i Atlas's light curve is anything but natural. Photometric data from NASA's test satellite revealed a periodic brightening that pulsed with the precision of a clock, sweeping like a lighthouse beam every 7.2 hours. A tumbling potato-shaped rock would produce a smooth rolling sine wave of light. This was a square wave ramping up in brightness by a full 1.8 magnitudes in just under an hour, holding steady, and then dropping off sharply. This implies an object with distinct flat sides and sharp edges unlike the irregular shapes of natural bodies. Furthermore, outgassing should create torque, causing the object's spin period to change over time. Instead, the 7.2-hour period remained locked in to within a thousandth of a second, a major physical contradiction. An expert on exoplanet light curves like MIT's Sarah Seeger would immediately recognize this as unnatural. The sharp increase in brightness also hints at a highly reflective, possibly metallic surface being periodically revealed to our line of sight. Ancient Sky Metal, Historical Context So, the idea of metal falling from the sky isn't new, it's actually woven into our history. Around 3200 BCE, ancient Egyptians hammered beads from iron they couldn't possibly have smelted. Analysis of artifacts from the Gertzi tombs reveals the secret. The beads contain nearly 30% nickel. No terrestrial ore has that composition. The only source was a rare type of meteorite called an ataxite. There's a similar story with Tutankhamun's tomb. Buried with him was a dagger with a blade of meteoritic iron containing 11% nickel and 0.6% cobalt, a composition detailed in a 2016 study in meteoritics and planetary science. This iron from heaven was, you know, incredibly rare. The Babylonians also watched the skies and their cuneiform tablets speak of burning stones as omens. The Akkadian word for iron, and dot bar comma is sometimes translated as sky metal. These cultures didn't understand the chemistry, but they knew this metal was different, special, and came from beyond their world. They understood that when the sky delivers something new, it can be both a wonder and a warning. Today, astronomers use powerful telescopes, but the core question remains, when an object arrives with a signature that defies explanation, what message is it bringing? A.V. Loeb's Challenge to Consensus You can't have a conversation about interstellar anomalies without Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb. 
When the data on 3i Atlas came out, he immediately argued in a new preprint that these are all potential hallmarks of something engineered. In the lab, separating nickel from iron is done via the MON process, which, kinda eerily, uses carbon monoxide to create volatile nickel carbonyl, the exact chemistry hinted at in the comet's coma. Loeb argues that while the community scrambles to invent exotic natural comets, we must apply Occam's razor. Is it simpler to invent new astrophysics, or to consider an existing category of object we've theorized about, technology? His critics rightly say extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But Loeb's position, now supported by his Galileo Project initiative, is that the evidence is already extraordinary. The project's mission is to actively search for technological signatures, and 3i Atlas fits the profile of exactly what they are looking for. Clinging to familiar explanations when the data screams otherwise is a failure of scientific imagination. Scientific Community Divided The case of 3i Atlas split the astronomical community. On one side were scientists working to find a natural, if exotic, explanation. Dr. Alan Stern, principal investigator of the New Horizons mission, had previously proposed that Oumuamua could be a nitrogen iceberg from a Pluto-like exoplanet. Maybe 3i Atlas was a carbon dioxide iceberg from a similar world. Others, like comet expert Dr. Matthew Knight, argued that the non-gravitational acceleration could still be explained by powerful, localized jets. On the other side were those emboldened by Loeb, who argued that we had to take the artificial origin hypothesis seriously. They pointed out that a light sail, a thin reflective sheet, could neatly explain both the sharp light curve and the acceleration. No one was claiming definitive proof, but the idea that 3i Atlas might be a probe, or a fragment of one, was no longer a fringe theory. It was being actively discussed. Peer-reviewed journals and online forums buzzed with debate, as every new piece of data was scrutinized. The object was a cosmic Rorschach test, and what you saw depended on how willing you were to challenge fundamental assumptions about our place in the universe. NASA's High Anomaly Classification Officially NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office under Lindley Johnson has flagged 3Y Atlas as a high-priority scientific object. While it poses no impact threat, its trajectory is being monitored by JPL's Sentry-2 system with an unusual condition code 9, indicating a trajectory so unpredictable it defies reliable long-term projection. This flag essentially tells the entire astronomical community that all bets are off, for where this object will be in the future, making follow-up observations extremely difficult and urgent. Internally, this triggers discussions at the highest levels of NASA's Planetary Science Division about the fundamental nature of the object. It becomes a question not just of tracking, but of understanding. The tension between the cautious public statements and the urgent internal scramble to understand what they are dealing with is palpable. The official line is more data needed, but the unofficial reality is that this object is an enigma of the highest order. So what is 3i Atlas? Is it a cosmic fluke, a messenger from a type of star system whose chemistry is alien to us, or is it something more? The evidence is tantalizing and honestly deeply unsettling. An object that moves on its own, shines with a mechanical rhythm, and is made of materials that shouldn't exist in nature. It could be the first definitive proof that we are not alone in the universe, a piece of technology from a civilization far beyond our own. For now, the answer hangs in the balance, locked in the data awaiting the next observation that could finally tip the scales. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more deep dives into the mysteries of our cosmos. What do you think 3i Atlas is? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching Future Facts.